Hi, Gloria. Hi. Here we are on a beautiful but very cold spring day with everyone in confinement and dealing with whatever is happening. So, well, I don't need to introduce you. Everybody knows who you are. You are the role model of all women. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I thought that was you. No, 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 role model. That, that is you. You are <laughs> the role model of all women. You're the mother of feminism. You are an I'm the sister. I'm kind of the sister, not the mother. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. Okay. But the big sister of my... Certainly when I came to New York and you were like, I was in awe of you. And the idea that we met and we became friends and we've known each other now for 40 years is a, is, a, is a great privilege to me. But you are always this incredible, what I love about you is that you are both complete, totally realistic and aware and not delusional. So you know what's going on. And yet you always have this incredible force and this incredible flame of optimism. So now that we have been in confinement for almost eight weeks or something like that, what have you, have you learned anything personally as the world? Is there anything, what are you telling us? Mm. Well, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't feel as if I have a whole well-defined <laughs> uh, message. No, but what but, have you but I do think, but I do think that it, this has taught us in a very valuable way that if this uh, evil little cell <laughs> does not recognize race or gender or class or national boundaries, why do we? You right. know, I mean, obviously. Yet, yet the consequences of it. Yes, so no, it both so reveals the worse. inequities. Yes, I agree. Right. It, it reveals in, you know, why don't we have national health care? I mean, it, you know, it reveals the economic uh, and power inequities. It does both things. It's a huge, huge spotlight. So I hope and believe it's changing our consciousness. I mean, we, we feel more connected worldwide by a similar emergency, and yet we see the difference in the way we're able to respond because of the difference in our power and circumstance. So both things are true. And I hope, I hope, I hope that this is going to change our consciousness and our behavior. Have you, have you learned anything personally? What, what is the lesson that you, have you, you, what's the personal lesson that you got from that? Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, I, I think that I have learned that I was confusing motion with action. Oh, <laughs> because Ooh. because I, I spend I have spent, as you know, lots of time on the road and lecturing or listening or interviewing or whatever it was I was doing. Fighting, yeah. Uh, fighting, lobbying. And I, I'm not uh, I'm I'm certainly going to continue to to do that. But I think some of it was form, not substance. And in this current situation, we have to focus on substance because we can't go for form. You know, we can't. So are you saying that maybe you realize that you don't have to move that much in, in order to be a fair? Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think everybody is realizing that. Now, and also, I, and also I like the way we're connecting with each other now. I mean, I see all these, you know, very public folks that we've only seen in studios and so on. Suddenly, mm -hmm. I see like in your I'm, house. Yes, I mean you. We know each other anyway, so I'm not surprised by your bookshelves and <laughs> all your. But you know, you you see them with their uh, kids and in their without 
huge makeup. And without the makeup. And yes, the, you know, right. I know. So no, I, I think it's very, it's, there's, there's a very personal connection that's going on. I'm not saying that it substitutes, it does not substitute for being together with all five senses because you can't empathize to the same degree as you can when you're physically together. But it is way better than the old distancing yes. we had through media or even books, much as I love books. So that's, no, one of the things that certainly in France, but I'm sure it's in America too, but in France they're making a big part of, thing of it and I taped um, some something for it, is that there, there's an enormous amount of domestic violence within the confinement. Yes, well here too, yeah, right, right. It's, it's, it's supposedly the average is up 30%, apparently worldwide, or at least where, I mean, domestic violence is not reported everywhere, but where it's reported, it's something like up 30%, right? And that, and that is revealing, you know, in a very important way too. What worries me about the reporting is that it's reported without a perpetrator. It's mm -hmm. Well, they talk about domestic violence without saying who's, been, who's being violent. We well, assume that it's mostly women, although, you know, maybe occasionally it's men or old people or, it's, you know, I mean, and certainly kids. And children. And children. But um, I think what we're not, what we need to do with this is to say, why is this? Okay, this is because the hierarchy in the home is the original hierarchy, and then it makes other hierarchies every place else. If, if we're never going to have a democratic, peaceful society until we have democratic, peaceful homes. So I, I hope that the added emphasis I mean, it took us a long time to even get the phrase domestic violence or to talk about battered women or to, to e even include that in the law. When I don't know about you, <laughs> when I was growing up in Toledo, if a husband beat up his wife, the job of the police, they thought, was to get the criminal and the victim back together again. I mean, that was their idea of success. All right. So it... it <laughs> At least we've, we've advanced from that and we have shelters and laws and we understand it's a, but we haven't a, a, enough addressed the basic problem, which is that men through this society, which tells them have to dominate in, or, or some of them, they have to dominate in order to be masculine. I know. I know that in France that we have a, 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 a woman minister in charge of women and she has organized the way that because pe the police was very busy during the confinement because they would go around and, you know, give, um, uh, um, you know, make people, people pay if they were not, you know, inside the house. They were very busy. So you could report the domestic violence in the supermarket and um but it yes that's a great idea yeah, yeah right yeah to be able to to report it you know because i think that reporting it is already somehow some some form of a of a of a shame for the person who do who do it and it's some kind of a resistance for the one but it, it's a shame it should be a shame for the perpetrator, not for the... That's what I mean. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I meant. Yeah. Right. So, Gloria, people don't really have the opportunity to, to talk to you so much. So I want to take advantage of the intimacy that you and I have. If you were... What... You've lived a very full life with so many successes and so many fights and so many what are you the proudest of that you or the world has accomplished and what is what what is your wish what is it that you would like because i think words are so important what is 
what are your deepest wishes on how how we should pursue the women's causes mm. 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 gosh those are words that end in est deepest is, oh, yeah, are 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 hard to to answer but start with I, your your past start with you know within your life what are the things that thanks to you and the movement have been you know where success is and where are the drawbacks and where are we trying to go no, I'll, I'll i'll tell you when you say that to me when i experience the most when i'm the most moved and i feel you know the most uh like you know something important has happened is when somebody i don't know usually a woman not always but usually a woman uh comes up to me in the street or in the airport or wherever i am and and tells me what's different in her life because of the movement in general because of the idea of equal you know whatever it is and it's that immediate feeling of looking at a human being who's saying to me, my life is better because of this. It, it may or may not have had anything to do with me, but she sees me as a recognizable as a symbol of, of that. And so I get this incredible reward. And I, there's nothing on earth, nothing on I earth. Know more satisfying than that absolutely you must find that too i do i do i do and that's why you know i mean as we are in the fall or winter of our lives i think it's very and you know and the time left is less and less you know it's very important to make sure that the legacy stays on and that's why i'm asking you what do you wish what is it that you would like to happen well, immediately, I want to get rid of Donald Trump. I mean, you know, <laughs> the virus in the White House. I mean, you know, we did not elect this guy by majority vote, and he's destroyed, you know. You know, we have to. All right, so the first lesson we is we should, that. we should all vote. We should all vote, and yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and it, that's the most immediate. And in a longer-term form of the same thing, we need to understand that our daily relationships are the basis of democracy. So if we have democratic families, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of not going to have a democratic society really until we have democratic families, because that's where kids learn what normal or, you know, what relationships are. And when you say democratic Fat, you mean, you know, obviously you don't mean it in the political way. I know that, but some people may. Well, you mean that everybody has the right yeah. to think and speak and do. Right. And that, that, that children see that, that their parents, whether they're men and women or two women or two men, whoever their family is, that people share the... Um, chores and the rewards of the household and the money of the household and have equal access to the world outside the home and safety inside the home just whatever and equal pay and equal pay whatever form the the family takes it's it's a democratic family and that the kids are treated as unique individuals yes. i have to say that I, I i really benefited from the fact that my not only my mother, but my, both my grandmothers were theosophists. You know, one was a Jewish family, one was a Christian family, but <laughs> both of them had become theosophists. So be, because they believe it, to a certain extent in reincarnation, their idea of child rearing was kind of wonderful. It was that this child arrives in your home, a little stranger who you have the duty and gift of loving and caring for until they're self-sufficient. But you do not own that person. That person is who they are As before they arrived. <laughs> right. And that's kind of great, right? Because it 
it doesn't treat children like a blank slate on which anything yes. can be written. Yes, and one of the things that I always say is that we don't, as children, we do not choose our parents. You know, I always am shocked when somebody, you know, parents divorce and the father say, oh, you're like your mother. Well, you choose my mother. I didn't, <laughs> you know? And right. so I think that, the and, and even for children or for each one of us, it is important to know we did not choose our parents and therefore we do not have to carry the weight of what we may or may not like all our lives, you know? So that's for sure. And, and children should be treated as, mm -hmm. as, as human beings, for sure. And the other thing I think that is very important, my mother used to say that, is that we all fight for freedom. We all feel we should be free. But our freedom, our individual freedom, stops when it infringes somebody else's freedom. Yes, right. Right. And that is also so important to, but you always talk about the right, uh, um, the birth. I mean, the, you know, don't you always say that the, uh, the, uh, the woman is in charge of her body? Yes. Well, I think patriarchy and patriarchy all, you know, intertwined with racism is is based on controlling reproduction that's the whole idea you know that uh, you know that we happen to have wombs and men don't so <laughs> controlling uh children their possession how many what race was of you know is the first step in in most hierarchies as far as i can see actually i once spent forever reading about the rise of, of fascism uh, to, to write about uh, Hitler because people were then trying to equate um, abortion with, uh, you know, anti-Semitism. I mean, it was a crazy equation, but it caused me to read everything and to realize that he, the first thing Hitler did when he was elected, and he was elected, which is important to remember, <laughs> uh, was to padlock the family planning clinics and declare abortion a crime against the state with a death penalty for the doctor and imprisonment for the woman who in prison can be compelled to have children, presuming she's an Aryan woman, you know, that they, he wanted Aryan women to have children. So the first step in hierarchy is controlling, frequently anyway, is controlling reproduction. And we don't look at that. We sort of treat it as a woman's issue over here, some, some other place, instead of seeing it as the first step in that, that we each men and women have a right to control our own physical selves is the first step in democracy. If we don't rule our own physical selves, where is democracy? Of course, of course. Where, where do we stay? I mean, after Me Too, have women made progress? Yes. Yes, well, you know, if you, you and I are, we remember where Me Too came from, right? So the very, I think we've talked about this, the very term sexual harassment was invented by women at Cornell University who were trying to describe what happened to them uh, on their summer jobs. And they invented the term sexual harassment. And then we at Ms. Magazine did a cover story on it, which caused us to be put out of supermarkets <laughs> nationally because it was too controversial. I mean, off the newsstands in supermarkets. Uh, then um, the, it was written into uh, sexual har harassment or into uh, sex discrimination law. Then there were several cases brought, all by black women. Black women have almost always been pioneers, of feminists in every way. And yeah. then, there were, then there were the Anita Hill hearings, which educated the country. And so I think it's important to understand that there's been a progression up to the Me Too movement. So now it's, yeah. more, it's more possible 
that uh, ordinary individual women on the street, in the office, in the factory, in the fields, wherever they are, can speak up about it and say, wait a minute, my body belongs to me. That's right. It, 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 you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that there aren't sometimes false accusations, you know, we need- Of course, to... but that's correct, collateral damage. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not, <clears throat> it's not as if we're saying- Of course not. When we say, believe women, we're not saying that they don't have to be believable. Of course. <laughs> sure. but, um, but it's a huge, huge difference. Uh, and of course, Sometimes this happens to men too. Actually, under sexual harassment law, the first case that was won was a man. It was a man, yeah. It was a, a, really? Yeah, it was a woman in California, I think, I'd have to look this up, who was requiring her employee. Uh, men. Who, yeah, who, a man of a different ethnicity, I've forgotten. Uh, to uh, go to bed with her in order to keep his job. I mean, wow. oh, that's <laughs> people should know that. Yeah, so it, it, it people it, should know that. That's I mean, it was, it was a little bit of an irony that the first person to be convicted was a woman, but <laughs> it does point out that uh, it applies to everybody. That it's not biased. Yes, right. Oh, I will quote that. That's a very important piece of trivia. <laughs> you know, I when you were mentioning Anita Hale. Um, I mean, I, I love her so much. She, and she, like you, she has such and kept such youth. I mean, she's younger, but, but a sense of humor, you know, she is so, um, she, I mean, the, the fact she has no fear, she had no fear. I mean, this black woman who looked at all of these white men in Senate and talked and, and spoke about the world penis mm -hmm. and said all of those things without blinking, without shaking, without teary eyes. I mean, the strength and the courage that she... No, she's, she's a miracle. She's a miracle she's and she amazing. educated all of us. And, and if you ask her, I mean, of course, none of us exactly knows how we got to be who we are, but... But she came from a uh, close, big... Uh, 13 children. Yes. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, it was the strength... Of the, the family. There. Yeah, it was a miracle, right. I know. The strength of the family. Yeah. It's, it's, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an obvious thing, but I really have never met a woman who is not strong. Mm -hmm. All women are strong. It's just that very often it's a husband or a brother or religion, or very often it's just themselves. And they just don't, they're afraid to show it. But yet there is a fire. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they take the children, they take the money, the jewelry, up they go. So with, in front of a tragedy, it's always the women who take over. And I think it's important that we remind that to women all the time, that their strength is really inside them. Well, and, and now I notice in, in pursuit of what you're saying, that the countries that happen to have female chiefs of state at this moment are responding to this crisis. So well. Better because it's a more communal, uh, you know, for That's whatever it. reason, it, it, they're, they're able to respond. In, in a more effective way. It, it, it's also true, of course, that our, especially for white women, I think, some are still dependent on the income and identity of husbands. So we have to say that 53% of white women voted for Trump, while 96% of black women voted for Hillary Clinton. I mean, you know, this is, we're talking a major difference here. But it, but and, it comes from their voting in a deep sense, I would say, their husband's interest over their own. Um, so what should these women... What is the piece of wisdom that you 
can share with with those women, those white women who voted for Trump. I mean, what what is it that you would like to tell them? Well, I, I'm not trying to dictate in any way. No, 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 no. But, no, would, but I'm but not talking say, about, forget about who they voted for. Yeah. But uh, I'm not no, talking I'm not about forgetting about who they voted because they voted for right. a, somebody who has molest, molested women seriously, serially, and, and makes ter supports terrible legislation and so on. So I, I, would, I would just say to them, um, vote for yourself. You know, suppose, suppose your husband lost his money. Suppose he died or disappeared. Suppose he ran off with another woman. Suppose anything. You know, vote, vote, vote for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So vote for yourself and therefore remember, which is what I say all the time, that the most important relationship in life is the one you have with yourself first, right? Yes, yes. No, I, I, th I think that's true. Because uh, It's one... hard to say. I'm glad you say it because it's otherwise per perceived as... as uh, no, this thing. Yeah, right. And that is... But it I'm isn't. Off. It isn't. Right. It's, it's, it's because once you have managed to have a real good honest, demanding, but, but caring relationship with yourself, then once you accept who you are and own who you are, the chances are that your relationships with others are optional. They are uh, a plus, but not a must. And I think... What, what, what uh, we, you know, you should make a, a list, Dion, of the things that because as you're saying that, I'm thinking, what form does that take? What do you uh, mean? Well, it, the relationship with yourself. I think it's it's knowing what your talent is, or what you love. You know what you well, what you love it, to do. What, so much you forget what time it is, or it's. I being, think it's about. I think personally, at this at this point of my life, I think that the secret of life is owning it. Own it. Whatever it is, you own your imperfection, they become your asset. You own your vulnerability, it becomes your strength. You being diagnosed with cancer, own it. Okay, this is the reality. What does the doctor say? What does this one say? But in other words, owning it, right? Mm -hmm. So by owning it, it means also accepting who you are, the good, the bad, the imperfection, all of that, but being whole with it. And therefore have a good relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good relationship with yourself, then you will have a good relationship with others because you won't, it's, it won't be a must, but it's a plus. It becomes a luxury. I think that even a man who loves you unconditionally, I have a husband who loves me so much and has proven it, but when I get needy, I know he likes me less. <laughs> I know it. I'm trying to think what the opposite is to I to so agree with you and I I think the opposite is denial. What do you think? Yes, yes, delusional. Yeah, yeah right. The point you're is denying that what not being delusional. Which is hard. Which is hard. I mean, you know, you and it's like there are certain words that should disappear completely. Blame. Well, blame. Will you blame the weather or you blame your mother or you know, your mother's dead 20 years or this one or that one. Blame and shame, all of those words should not exist and I think we should own it. And so when you say, when you were talking about these women who think about their husband first, right? That's what you were saying. Mm. They're, they're voting for their husband. Well, because their identity is lies there, you know. I mean, you were born a long time ago. Simplify it, but I think that's yeah, right. You were born a long time ago in Toledo, Ohio, right? So I'm sure that most of the women around you were like that. Yes, absolutely, right. Most of the women around me and in my high school and so on, the husbands worked in factories. The women were. Uh, homemakers or domestics, uh, 
they often had come from East European or you know places uh, that they were felt super grateful to get here, and they'd come from poverty and so on. No, that was the atmosphere. Yes. So, but you did you ever want to be a man when you were a little girl? No, I never did. No, but you wanted to have a man's life. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know, that's interesting. I don't think I ever thought of it as a man's life. I think I was rescued by Joe and Little Women, <laughs> who was a writer. <laughs> and I thought, no, oh, but I mean, you wanted what? to have the rights that men have. But I remember as a, as a very little girl being taken to the shoe store <laughs> by my father, I think. And they had some kind of Oxfords that they gave me and I said no those are boys shoes I want girl shoes <laughs> so I guess I you know I, I I don't ever remember wanting to be a boy actually but that's also something that's very different I mean you know if you, if you talk the big if you talk to somebody and you say the biggest feminist in the world or in America or whatever you would automatically think that maybe that feminist was not feminine. And one of the things that I always loved about you is that you were so feminine and you had the most eloquent um, hands and beautiful skin and beautiful and you were always beautiful and sexy. And so that's why you are so still today, you're so, so modern and such a, did you ever feel like a loser, Gloria? Uh, yeah. Or even now, do you ever wake up and feel oh, like a loser? Yes, especially when I'm super behind in my writing deadlines, and I think, or or when I've I've spent three days writing one page or something. I think, what on earth am I doing here? You know, I could have chiseled these words in stone by now. You know, no. Do you I, talk I, to yourself? Pardon. Do you talk to yourself? Do I talk to myself? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I, not complete yeah. sentences, but little words escape. As but I'm I mean, sometimes in that. the middle of the night, if you go to the bathroom and you see your shadow on the mirror, do you ever, hi? No, no, I don't, I don't do it in a personified way, but it's like I'm having a conversation in my head. So little words escape. <laughs> so how do you want... The um, how would you like? I mean, I know you're very modest, and I know all of those things about you. I mean, I'm just you realistic. Know, I'm not. Modest. Yes, you are modest. Yes, you are modest, and you are, and you don't require any help, and you always go everywhere alone, and you, you know, you are, which, which, which obviously keeps you young and keeps you adorable and attractive and all of that. But nevertheless. How do you want, I mean, one adjective, how do you want to be remembered? Oh, that's hard. Can I do more than one word? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you could do the whole pack. <laughs> As someone who tried to leave the world a kinder place than it was when I showed up. Yes, well, I know for sure that you have warmed a lot of hearts, a lot of hearts, mine for sure. And there's never a time that I have been with you or talked with you or traveled with you that I didn't feel incredibly enriched by your presence. But in the most in the most natural and humble and, and compassionate way, but never ever condescending and always laughing and always. You know, Dion, while you're saying this, which I, I deeply appreciate and I'm absorbing and it's wonderful, but I just want to say it seems to me that you're, I mean, I was leaving, or not exactly giving up, but leaving <laughs> um, 
difficult times and a economic place that wasn't great and and you on the other hand were leaving uh, places that the world regarded as enviable uh, a way of life a title <laughs> uh, as princess you know all these things that were seductive I would think because the world envied them and yet you had the courage to say I'm going to be my own self and I'm going to do my own work that well, seems think to me so miraculous well we love each other that's for sure and <laughs> we respect each other which is wonderful but since you mentioned the princess thing i have to tell the people who will listen to this <clears throat> a few years ago i uh, gloria was getting an award and she asked me if i would give her the award and of course it was an enormous privilege and I accepted it. And I, I never really prepare my speech because I like to speak from my heart. And while we were at the table and people were talking about Gloria and it was about to happen, all of a sudden I remembered that I came to America. I had married a prince and therefore I came, I was a young princess. And I wasn't necessarily used to be a princess, but I had married a prince, so I was a princess. And in America, to be a princess was like, ooh, people loved it. And I remember then when I heard about Gloria Steinem, and when Gloria Steinem created Ms. Magazine, MS, and then all of a sudden, you didn't have to be either a Miss or a missus, you had a new way of being described, which was a miss. And I remember that I decided to give up the title of princess to be a miss. And uh, I had forgotten about this, but no, now I'm- but, but, you, you know, that's, you know, and that was, you know, that to me, you know, because you were giving up something that was admired by a lot of society. Uh, do you but see it was a statement. It was, I wanted to yes. be part of do your you, flag. Do you see a, a parallel now with what's happening with the British royal family and the uh, advent into this country of, I mean, they, they're kind of giving up the, the titles, right? You yeah. Know, I, it, I, 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 I don't know them at all, of course, but I admire that they're doing that. Well, I, 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 yeah, I know them a little bit. It's, it's, um, you know, he was a little boy when his mother died. I think it has a lot to do with it. But anyway, I, all I wanted to say is that me as a woman, I was happy to be part of your tribe. And it has been an honor and a privilege and a joy for me as for millions of women to be part of your tribe mm -hmm. and, and 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 your tribe my dear okay mm -hmm. right. <laughs> anyway thank you so this much does not have a hierarchy okay we are you know well i heard another thing that was very nice lady you said when you build a community you acquire power when you lose the community you lose the power. Yes. So right. what you have created, of which I am a soldier, one of the soldiers, is that you have created a community of women. And we should all be reminded that and encouraged by that and join your community mm -hmm. with humility, strength, and power. Yes, and just remember that I, the, I had teachers you know, I had Bella Abzug and Flo Kennedy and, you know, <laughs> all kinds of, 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 you know, we, I don't know, we reach out to each other and that's how we become a community. So I'm getting to be the oldest one, but that doesn't mean there weren't people before me. <laughs> there were. You will be forever young. Thank you, Gloria Steinem. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.